Now that you've downloaded your free Zangati for ESX, let's get it installed. This is a very simple process. Just unzip the, the zip file in a convenient place that's accessible to your vSphere client and open up vSphere. We'll need to select a host and then go ahead and go to the file menu and click deploy OVF template. This whole process will be complete in about 10 minutes. We'll go ahead and uh, browse to the location of our file. And for me, I'll go ahead and select it and press next. It'll ask us to confirm the template details, which we can do. Uh, we'll give it a name. I'll call mine XESX test and select a location for it. Then we just need to pick off a data store for this particular virtual machine. I'll put it on my data store number one here. And you can choose either thick or thin provisioned format. Uh, for a Zangati for ESX, using thin provisioned, it'll take up a lot less space on disk. So we'll take up a thin provisioned format. And we can go ahead and uh, assign our NIC cards into, uh, into port groups. If you have a promiscuous mode port group, you can go ahead and select it. Uh, if not, the, the system will go ahead and, uh, and choose one. So I'm just gonna leave this alone. And then we can go ahead and we're ready to complete. At this point, I'll hit the finish button and the vSphere client will go ahead and import the OVF file. Now this process will take just a couple of minutes. It really depends on the speed of your network and uh, we'll pick it up in just a moment. Now that the appliance is finishing loading, the vSphere client will go ahead and continue to deploy it and we can hit the close button to finish. And then let's highlight our new uh, virtual machine that's deployed and we just need to simply power it on. Now, at the point that we power on our virtual appliance, several things are going to happen. First of all, the machine is going to go through its normal boot up process. It's also going to go ahead and contact your DHCP server and obtain an IP address. And this process will take several minutes. And when we're done, uh, we'll be able to go to the summary tab here. And for IP addresses, it will actually show the IP address that the Zangati for ESX dashboard has received. This step will be complete when you see an IP address there. Now that we have an IP address listed for our virtual appliance, the next step is going to be to open a web browser and go ahead and browse to this IP address. As you browse to this IP address, you'll receive several different security warnings. These security warnings are related to the self-signed certificate that's created on the appliance initially. If you wish to remove these, after the installation is complete, you can upload a valid certificate to your Zangati for ESX dashboard. We're going to select the management user login, and we're going to choose login directly. This will go ahead and launch Java. And again, Java will uh, give minor complaints around the issue of self-signed certificates, but you can click through those. Uh, no harm will come. And the actual management software will launch. The initial login is very simple. It's admin with a password of admin again. And for the first time login, you'll be asked to enter some credentials. So uh, we'll go ahead and create a password that uh, meets the password complexity requirements. And you can do the same on yours. And uh, let's see, you can pick a uh, nice short name. I'll put in Bach, you do as you wish. And with this, with the initial launch, we're going to be prompted for the IP address of the service console for the host on which we've installed this dashboard. In my case, this is 10.3.4.122. You'll of course put in what's, what's right for your environment. Um, it's important with the Zangati for ESX that you actually put in the host and not the vCenter server. The Zangati for ESX uh, dashboard is designed to work directly to the host. If you'd like to integrate with your vCenter server and see all of the hosts in your network on one display, then uh, you'll need one of the Zangati uh, management dashboards, either the standard or the enterprise edition. So I'm going to go ahead and put in my credentials for the host, and you can hit the test button to verify that the credentials are good, and I will hit OK. The system will continue to implement this configuration, and when it's done, 
saving this data, then it's going to proceed for a couple more questions that have to do with the setup of the appliance. The first of these questions is one that's called My Network, and this is necessary to specify what traffic is interesting to display on the dashboard. In my case, My Network is built on the 10 subnet, so I'm going to consider that anything in the entire 10 network is interesting traffic. Of course, you could put in 192.168 or 172.16 and whatever the appropriate mask is to define this interesting space. This is a mandatory step, and you'll need to complete it. I'm going to hit OK. And at this point, the dashboard will load. As you can see, the actual configuration is trivial. The first thing we're going to receive is we'll actually receive some network traffic across the bottom. You'll notice that it says approximately one minute delay while various system buffers are, are filling. So give the system a little bit of time and it will start to display data. And the, the data will come in first um, in the form of, uh, of network traffic here. And then as we communicate with the ESX host, we'll begin to populate some of the other summary graphs. And finally, the area that has CPU, memory, and disk uh, will populate last of all. The, the process of filling in um, the, the first box may take around a minute. It may take an additional um, one to two minutes to display this, the storage um, and some of the other summary graphs. And then finally displaying the, uh, the, the CPU, the memory, and the, the storage summaries from the ESX host may take an additional uh, 50 seconds to, to a minute or even a minute and a half after that. So if this entire process of populating the dashboard takes uh, in total around three minutes, don't be alarmed. The system is res responding normally and you'll very quickly have a fully functional Zangati for ESX dashboard uh, capable of giving you a lot of insight into exactly what's happening in your virtual infrastructure.